Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week, I'm going to explore the science of tsunamis. Let's check it out. Tsunamis are often misnamed tidal waves. The name tsunami comes from the Japanese su meaning harbour and nami meaning wave. So tsunami simply means harbour wave. Tsunamis can reach heights of over 100 feet and travel at speeds of up to 600 miles per hour. But what actually causes a tsunami? Tsunamis can be caused by earthquakes, underwater volcanoes, underwater landslides and a meteor strike could also cause a tsunami. In a recent video exploring volcanoes, I explained that the Earth is made up of multiple layers. To find out more about that, I've put a link in the description to that volcanoes video. One of the things I said in that video is that the crust of the Earth is made up of tectonic plates. Now sometimes, when these plates rub together, one plate is forced underneath the other. This rubbing and movement of the plates can cause earthquakes, but it can also cause tsunamis. When two plates rub together and one gets forced underneath, friction is caused between the two plates. The plate in the top reaches a point where it can't move anymore and starts to get forced up away from the plate that is moving underneath it down into the mantle. Eventually, the pressure of this top plate getting forced up overcomes the friction between the two plates and it suddenly falls back down. This movement forces the water above the plate to rise up into the air and that shockwave travels through the water in the form of a tsunami. Now a tsunami isn't just made up of a single wave, a tsunami is made up of a series of waves. So this week I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations to show how tsunamis form and how they travel through the water and also how they can affect the land. The first demonstration this week is a tsunami in a bottle. To perform this, you will require a 1.5 to 2 litre bottle with a cap, a 500 milliliter bottle, a jug or bottle with water, and some gravel. The first thing I'm going to do is pour gravel into my 1.5 litre bottle until it comes up about 2 inches high from the bottom of the bottle. Next, I'm going to half fill my 500 milliliter bottle with water, and then I'm going to pour this into my one and a half litre bottle and put the cap on. Once the cap is on the bottle, I'm going to lie it down on the counter and wait for the water to stop moving. You'll notice that the gravel is now sloping into the water and has formed what is going to be our shoreline. We said that tsunamis can be caused when two tectonic plates rub together and one gets forced up above the other. To create the tsunami demonstration in this bottle, what we're going to do is lift one end of the bottle and quickly lower it back down to the counter and watch what happens with the waves. When we first lift the end of the bottle, it causes a big wave to rush up the shoreline. And when we quickly put it back down, the waves don't stop there, but they keep coming up to the shoreline and taking bits of gravel away with it. This is like what happens in an actual tsunami. A tsunami is not just one single wave, it is a series of waves which all come up and batter the shoreline and then draw back again out to sea. The next demonstration is going to look at tsunamis in a bit more detail with them washing up to the shoreline and the effects it can have on things on the shore. For the second demonstration, I've got a large clear plastic tub, some newspaper, some gravel, some sand, a sheet of plastic and some of my son's toys. I'm going to set this up and show you how to create another tsunami demonstration. The first thing I'm going to do is ball up some newspaper and place this at one end of the tub and this is going to be the start of my shoreline. Next, I'm going to pour some gravel on top of the newspaper and in front of it to start building up a sloped shoreline. And then I'm going to add sand on top to make this look more like a beach. 
I'm going to add some of my son's toys to the top of the shoreline to show how they can be affected by a tsunami. Then I'm going to pour in some water until it comes about halfway up my shoreline. Now that it's set up, it's time to perform my tsunami demonstration. Remember earlier, I said a tsunami can be caused when a tectonic plate gets forced up and then falls back down? Well, I'm going to do something similar to try and create a tsunami in my tub. I'm going to put my sheet of plastic down into the bottom of my tub and then lift one end of it until it is out of the water. I'm then going to force it down into the water to create a tsunami to rise up my shoreline. You'll notice that pushing the plastic down into the water isn't creating a very big wave that's going up my shoreline, so I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to use a sheet of plastic to push the water from one end to the other to create a bigger wave. This isn't really cheating, because when a tsunami starts, it is a series of small waves that hit together and get bigger and bigger as they approach the shoreline. All I'm doing is creating this initial push with a bit of plastic, but you'll see the waves start to hit together and get bigger before they reach my shoreline. Just like with the tsunami in a bottle, you'll notice that there wasn't just one big wave, there were a series of waves that went up the shoreline and washed away again, taking bits of sand and gravel with them. The orange block didn't last very long with the waves hitting the shoreline, but you'll notice that after a while, the gravel that the car was standing on got taken out to sea and eventually the car was dragged out to sea as well with the water. The person has managed to survive, but I think part of that is because they're a bit propped up by the edge of the box. If you are near a shoreline and there is a tsunami warning, you need to get inland and to high ground as quickly as possible. Never be tempted to go to a shoreline to watch a tsunami, because if you can see the wave, it is already too late for you to be able to outrun it. There are organisations all around the world responsible for monitoring earthquakes and providing tsunami warnings. Although they may be able to warn when a tsunami could strike, it is not possible to predict how much damage the tsunami is going to cause to the shoreline that it does hit. This is what makes tsunamis particularly frightening and deadly natural disasters. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far and here to my robot review videos which come out every two weeks. This has been STEM with Mr N exploring tsunamis. <laughs>